Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. He has a lot of problems. Struggle to be top five in points at the end of the season. Wow. You don't bleach your, your hair, you're, you're a sellout. Yo, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Moto Aftermath Show. This is episode number 265. My name is Travis. I'm your host. We are in the TLR Coding Studios here. We're going to wrap up the Seattle Supercross round here. Another moist track, needless to say. In studio with me here, got one of the co-hosts. It's Mr. Coley Getty. Hey, bud. Moist. <laughs> moist. Uh, Justin's not here. He's uh, been fighting a head cold apparently all week, but he did actually let us know he had a head cold, which I was quite impressed with. No call, no shows are not a thing. Not a thing anymore. Kind of like how he, kind of like how he let us know the schedule last week for the summer. He Dude. he let us know early today he wasn't making it tonight. Well, he's lining shit up. He's lining shit up. He's taking a step, ladies and gentlemen, becoming a man, a real real man. He is, right. he is a real man. Anyway, uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Like I said, we're going to wrap up Seattle Supercross. Um, before we get to that, just want to thank our sponsors. So the show is presented by uh, 50 Graphics. Um, they are our newest uh, presenting sponsor there. You can check them out, 50graphics.com. There is a link in the description. I think you get like 10 or 15% off, and they do custom graphics for your bike. I have mine over here, and one, one of these days, I'm going to actually finish getting them all on. He actually sent me a new right shroud. Mm. Because he contacted me the other day to say he really enjoyed all the reads we were doing. So, shout out, Jason. Uh, and, yeah, and so, uh, yeah, and I was like, hey, man, I really suck at doing this. Would it be possible to get a right shroud? He said, yeah, man, no problem. Put it in the mail tomorrow. Hey, that's customer service that's right there. That's customer service right there. Uh, anyway, solid graphics, custom done. You can do basically anything you want to do with them. Um, he's very free-flowing there in that sense. He also has pre-made kits and stuff like that you can order. Uh, so, again, make sure to check them out at 50graphics.com link in the description down below and they will also be bringing us our 250 race recap tonight um our other presenting sponsor complete racing solutions and we're going to highlight coach rob's digital cookbooks again here uh so if you're not sure what to purchase when you go to the store or what to make for a healthy snack or lunch or dinner coach rob has you covered uh make sure to check out coachrobstore.com these cookbooks are 10 to 15 dollars they'll help you lose weight well, I need it because uh, look what I just rolled in with. That Mac Donald's. I had some Mac Shack today. Do you enjoy eating human beings or? I mean, it was a pretty good. Cannibalism is a thing, huh? Anyway. Uh, I don't think. <laughs> okay, we'll save that for the tinfoil hat, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, uh, so shout out to Coach Rob and Complete Racing Solutions there. Again, make sure to check them out. Links in the description down below. Uh, as stated, we're in the TLR Coding Studio. So if you guys need anything powder coated or seracoded, make sure to check them out. TLR Coatings on all the major social networks and at tlrcoatings.com. We have uh, our newest show sponsor, Pro Flow Racing. So for all of you guys out there with kids like I have, uh, mine has moved off the PW50. Uh, uh, but he uh, he builds some really, really high-quality PW50s. If you go to a national race like Loretta's or something, you will see some of these. You will, will pull a whole shot, probably. I mean, they, he's at least half the gate every single year at Loretta's. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. 20, somewhere between usually like 20 and 25 bikes on the gate at Loretta's are him. There's like two main guys. It's him and somebody else who does it, and he he covers half of them. Uh, we have again, we have a PW50 um, that we took to him. It was not a new one. I believe it's a '96 or '98 that I bought my daughter, and yeah, I mean it they've was been a, the same forever. I was gonna say it was a legit barn find, uh, and he took it in, and we had next to zero issues over the last three years with it. So. Um, make sure to check them out i don't have the website written down i will the link will be in the description down below so check them out for all that stuff um and they're going to bring us our pro flow racing mini moment of the race oh like how i worked all that in there yeah the pro flow mini, mini moment. moment of the race that's going to take a little bit to get used to because he makes mini bikes oh i get it all right. But that's just, it's a little bit, I, it, I, you sound like Buster Rhymes a I little bit. I came up with it on the fly, like as I was making these show notes. So, 
All right, I'm gonna. I know what my mini moment is. Okay, good. I've got. It's it. kind of a big moment, <laughs> I, but it's a mini moment. Well, I'm. Sh- I think I know what you're talking about. Mine is different than that, so that's good. Um, we also got Gutterworks on board with us to um, uh, do all your exterior modifications on your house. If you're in the Southwest Michigan area, mostly seamless gutters, but they can do siding and other things too. Uh, I mean, Nelson, Josh is building a full-on fucking house right now, so. But he's not or doing. Beep, building he's, the house. He's not doing all of it though doing a lot of it he is doing a lot but not all of it and i know they don't do all of it like that look that man could probably build you a track too more than likely not probably i know he can did see them last week that man can build a lot of things so anyway uh so they're gonna bring us our 450 race recap there uh we've got and then our last one we've got isaac nelson designs on board with us here doing all our logo designs uh we don't have a deegan danger zone this week though because obviously we were back to west coast so we could probably find one is what it is there's been a lot of. Okay, I guess we can bring something up. Uh, we'll just talk. We'll talk The halftime report's going to be real lit this week. Well, let's uh, let's talk say. Deegan in the halftime report too. Okay. Well, we can do that too. So first up here, though, we are going to go with our 450 race recap, brought to you by our friends at Gutterworks. Oh, oh, oh wait, sorry. Hold on. Back it up. I don't even think I have one. Back it up. You got one? No. It's on the list there, but I didn't. Um, oh, you got I can op- think of one on the on the fly. Okay, you got an thing. opening ceremonies. Go for it. Three, two, one. Hurry. Opening ceremonies. I'm going with just because I I remember being a kid at a varsity high school basketball game, oh and they played this song, and I thought it was hype. Oh boy. Here so we go. I don't know. I think it would fit Jason Anderson's vibe, but I'm gonna do uh, "Stay Fly" Three Six Mafia. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's kind of from your era. Hey, yeah, yeah you know, uh, yeah. used to bump that in the truck, dude, yeah, in the S10 or on saying. the way to school. I still bump it on the way to school. Oh man, and now I can't listen to Three Six Mafia. Rough. I mean, you can. Okay, never mind. You can't. Thank you. You're. You got tinfoil hat on. Or Thank something? you. I went to church this morning. Okay. So there we are. So anyway, so stay fly. You can stay fly. Ain't in there no more, huh? Mm, it's probably on CD somewhere. Is it just the? Is it the lyrics? Is it the name of the? It would be the, the name, name of, the, of the band. It would be the name of the band. <laughs> okay. Look, I know it's all crappy. So can we just say it's Juicy J? It's all crappy. It's all shitty. The music industry is completely discombobulated. Oh yeah, I mean, but. Speaking of which, have you watched that Nickelodeon documentary yet? I just finished watching some of it. I watched the last the last episode today with Emily. I need to watch the beginning stuff a little more. It was pretty interesting, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, you kind of look like Dan Snyder. First off, I'm not that fat. So <laughs> yeah, fuck I'm you. Like <laughs> Second off, I don't know. It's kind of gnarly. I don't know how Drake Bell's dad is not in prison for beating the shit out of somebody. Well. I didn't watch that episode. I heard that's that's pretty gnarly though, yeah, that situation. Once you get episode Three is intense. Mm. Um, that's the more that's Drake Bell's that's, whole deal. Yes, so that that one's rather intense. There, uh, if for anybody who doesn't know, we're talking about the kind of docu series there that's yeah. on. Uh, it's on Prime uh, or HBO, HBO Max, Max or one of the yeah. two. Quite on set, yeah, quite on set, which talks about the dark side of the of the uh, uh, children's stars I mean, in it, Hollywood. When you look at it and look what it turned Amanda Bynes into. Look what it did to Britney Spears. There's, like a, it, there's it's man, a lot of people in there's a spiral. A lot, so. There's a lot of that, man. So. No, that yeah, it was interesting. Well, good thing I'm never going to be in that world. <laughs> no, me neither. There's zero chance my kid goes that so, way. So let me ask you this one then. Okay. What if that whole docu series was about Disney, and you being the big Disney homer you are, would you boycott oh, Disney? I, oh, I mean, it's all it's all over the place. Yes. Here's the thing. You know who Eddie Bravo is, so right? You're still going to Disney. You know who Eddie Bravo is, right? I know who Johnny Bravo is. <laughs> That's a whole other thing we could talk about there when you when you start looking at that cartoon show. Well, I mean, look at SpongeBob. Uh, yeah, that's a thing too. I mean, yeah. Look, we're not going to go down. This I mean, path. there's a this lot of windows and all this those kids shows. So. A, <laughs> this I is know, not a conspiracy theory podcast. All right, all right. All right. Let, look, let, let, let's keep. When you get into then. that world, everybody has a blind spot for different things. Yeah, that is my blind spot. I will live by it, die by it. I understand all the evils that are there. But there's a blind spot to it. But you just like Mickey Mouse too much. It's not even so much Mickey Mouse. And to be honest, it's not even so much the Disney movie side of things. Which, to be really honest, if you get into the movie side of things with everything, it's pretty bad too. you just wouldn't watch 
any of it. You wouldn't listen to any music. You wouldn't watch any movies. You wouldn't watch any TV. It'd be a very different lifestyle than what we all deal with right now if you were really that hard on it. Now, yeah. there are some certain music stuff, for example, 3-6 Mafia, that I'm just like, man, dude, like that name is just too much like... In your face. That yeah. I'm, I'm just like, look, man. And yes, it was a big part of my youth growing up listening to rap and being about that. So, okay. But uh, I just, I mean, what was the 3-6 Mafia song that was on? Uh, I don't know. Popping My Collar tick, was a good one. No, TikTok here. It was really popular. All the skanks were using it. It was like, uh, it was something like, we're going to fuck her in the back of the bus and fill her nose up full of that dust or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, like that one was really big. And I was like, and like one day I was just like, this is fucked. This is absolutely. Oh, like, you start well, like we're going down a whole rabbit hole. Yeah, we got right We got to get off. Like, I, I read the lyrics <laughs> to all of Kanye's new album. So he, like, uh, that's a but, whole like, other like, interesting like, thing. Kanye, his verse was like real. It was the only realest verse. I've, I've listened to it. Yeah, yeah, and it was pretty real. Have you listened? But to- now the rest of the lyrics from all the other guys yeah. was just nonsense bullshit. Mm-hmm. So have you uh, have you listened to the lyrics uh, or read the lyrics of? californication i right uh, yeah and it was all coming true now kind it's of thing so weird it yeah. is so weird because i've heard some other ones like there was one that said like a michael jackson song was talking about the the disease that shall not be named from the last four years here and then i went back and listened to it and i was like yeah that's not what he says in there but then like the californication one i heard a couple of times and i'm like all right and so then i went exploring to see oh some different angles of it aka like I went different places to listen to the song to make sure it wasn't, you know, somebody who had like pl- AI'd it or yeah, something. Yeah, like. or whatever. Definitely don't think that's the case. I definitely think that that one is 100% like weird. Okay. Kinda so, like la- so last stuff. question on that is it like those guys were part of like all this stuff that knows what's coming down the line and I don't they know. Ju- they just spit it out? I don't I don't know. Number one, they I don't had, work they in had an inside I don't, line. I don't work in absolutes. Uh, at all because every time you think you know something then you get a right hook about something um the other thing too is is that like there's weird stuff like that all the time like look yeah, at the yeah, simpsons yeah, yeah the simpsons is super weird they've been all nailing the time. a lot of weird stuff yeah so and there's tons of theories out there about it and you can go look them up on tiktok before they try to ban that which is super <laughs> ironic in itself because they are just doing the same thing the u.s government does through facebook and instagram but the u.s government just doesn't want to admit it so that's a whole nother bag of worms yeah there. they're just trying to uh control it basically right? yeah. yeah so needless to say i don't know man all it's right, weird. well, we got the TLR tinfoil well, hat knocked out. Way. Yeah, we already <laughs> right got that. Uh, yeah. Here. So, all right, so now we can go into our 450 race recap, brought to you by our friends at Gutterworks. Always well hung, just like Cameron Saka do. Oof. That's a, it's a good unit there. That is a kit. Good unit. All right, well, yeah. somebody but, beat Jet. The streak's done. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I, I tell you what, we'll get to him. Uh, he would have won that race. Like he was. Yeah. So this is a very Cooper Webb race here. Of uh, that track was super technical. <laughs> very he bulldogish. Was very opportunistic and very bulldogish, and he just kind of rode his lines. It's actually ironic because in the qualifying show, I had said uh, he's going to have issues because he can't go in the bottom of the corners because they were full of water. Mm-hmm. Um, now he was running lower lines than a lot of other people, but. He still couldn't go all the way in the bottom, but again, in the main he made him work. He had he a couple a good, make him work. I was gonna say, how'd you like how he cut that one in during the main? It, there, yeah, and it was, by the end, it was like perfect. Yeah, yeah, like he like he cut it in about halfway through, and you saw him go through the inside of the corner and almost like get loose because he was trying to spin the rear wheel enough to make a line there. Mm-hmm. I could I don't remember what corner. It but was uh, they commented like after on that it. First uh, rhythm wasn't that it? Was the first rhythm, and then you turned left, and they were going like three three two, yeah. and then the whoops. Yeah, right? and yeah. in the bottom of that turn, there was there was one point because Ricky even made mention of it of like man Cooper Webb just trying to cut another line in down there, and like the reason he got kind of cattywampus in the bottom is because he was literally popping that clutch to try to dig mm-hmm. a rut down there it's wild to watch man it's oh really yeah. wild when, when he's got a bike working and the way he can just stick it to the bottom of a corner like that it is impressive to watch it's super cool and uh 
man, that's just what he does. Like that, that kind of ride like that is where he just never gives up, never say die, just keeps working the guy the whole race. Like that's why he's a two time champ. Yep. Um, however, if that were Jed out front, he ain't doing that to him. I don't think he can do it. No, I don't. That's the one guy. I don't think he can wear down like that. No, no. And I mean, here's the thing. The racecraft from Webb was impeccable, especially mm-hmm. at the end there going into that last corner. Like mm-hmm. he knew that Chase was going to try to do yeah. something, go inside. And I give yeah, Chase yeah. credit. Chase did everything he possibly could there yeah. other than really get alongside him and just wreck them both. Yeah. I mean, you're not passing Cooper Webb in the last corner. No. Sorry. No, it's not happening. So, um, and Chase Sexton was second. No. How about, how about, uh, the morning wood? Oh yeah. How are you going to forget about the morning wood? Oh my God. I was presented by Gutterworks so hard at that i mean i literally laughed out loud and i would look to ash i was like he just said on, hard as morning wood I, I didn't i didn't hear that and then the guys i was with they they said he said that and i was like did he really did oh, he yeah. really say that oh yeah his forearms were hard as morning wood oh man that's awesome and i think these guys are getting to the point it's like oh what are you gonna do find me a thousand bucks i just made 60 yeah you know what i mean or more than that probably more it's between 100 Here, and 150 now <laughs> so so for for the listeners that are wondering oh, what i'm dude. doing here you can check out our twitter yeah check out the twitter but i put cooper webb after tonight's win and it's that gif of quagmire he comes walking out on the front porch and after his left discovered forearm, internet porn yeah his left forearm is just roached so yeah that's cooper webb that is, man yeah so hilarious i love it but we need some shit like that yeah. that's like more that's like some ricky bobby shit you know yep. what i mean yep and he gets it down to 16 points I mean, uh, it's it's a quagmire. <laughs> has has it lowered your value on thinking that no, they're your percentage that you think Jet's gonna no, no okay. man. It's uh, I I don't know, man. It's I don't think he can bully bully Jet. I don't no. know why. No, I don't know. It's just no, and he might be able to. We'll see down the stretch. I was say, and we can. I mean, I guess we can just talk about all three of them. We can talk about him. We can talk about Sexton who got second. Yeah, we'll, and we can we'll talk get, about in, Jet, get into Sexton real quick because there there are a couple key points I think that lost that race for so him. So who is getting their ass reamed this week at KTM for the bike stalling? Mm, I don't know. I you, Sexton is visibly not happy. Um, and hearing some of those interviews on AC's unplugged, uh, pod there where he was talking about how angry he was with Honda and some of the mm-hmm. comments he was making to those guys. Yeah. Um, yes, he's maybe a little older, maybe tamed himself down a little bit, but I think there's probably some smart ass remarks being made still. Um, and, and he's, it's not going good, not going well. I feel that KTM is the mercedes team of motocross own rogers total wolf (laughs) yeah of we know what we're doing you need to figure it out yeah i can kind of see that Um, i mean that's the mentality they gave webb well yeah and i mean it's interesting the different things they're doing to try to make chase comfortable here Mm -hmm. and it's still Still isn't really working. He's looked a lot better. Yes, he the has. hand is healing. Yes. Um, and I'll tell you what lost that race for him. He didn't change his line before the mechanics area. He has a terrible habit of doing that. Yeah. He a terrible he was just habit. landed uh, into that rut, and three quarters away through that rut was just like running into a brick wall. It's just knife in the front end. He's it, he vi- stalled it once. He's very Jeremy Martin esque of he will pick his line, and he's just going to go through that line for the entire race, no matter Roxon what. Roxon does that shit too. Yeah. So, um,. So that and, he lost time in that corner every time. Yeah, and he so. knows he knows he struggles with the line selection. He says he openly talks about it, but then like it just doesn't does ever seem to change. Yeah. So uh, uh, if I'm watching that race back, like that's that was the killer. Mm-hmm. Like that one corner, yep. he would have tucked in and, and went to that inside that Webb was running. Yep. It'd be a whole different race. Yep. Sure. Paycheck could be. would be a little different too. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, third place jet and i mean Woo. justin's not here to argue this which sucks because yeah, i would love to have well, this conversation with him but i think he answered all the questions last night and jt has been very astute with this and i 100 percent agree with him if jet just rides his 80 percent like he always does and lets the race come to him he beats everybody all the time anyway 
Because mm-hmm. that, that's what he was doing last night. That's what he did in the Triple Crown. You, it's what he did in the Triple Crown. It's what he did last night, especially in that heat. He was doing it in that main up until the point. Uh, he was turning it up in that main a little bit. Nah, he never... He turned it up and, and started hitting that wall, and he was like three seconds a lap. Like He was on those guys with 14 minutes left. second and a half a lap faster every yeah. single lap until... He made contact with Webb. Right. So that's what I'm saying. He had a shit start, slid off the start or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and dude, he were he was. I was like, holy shit, he's there within four with 14 minutes left. Like, mm-hmm. there's no way he doesn't win. Yep. That happened. He was coming again. Mm-hmm. I believe he would have made a charge again. I think he made. He say he made another mistake, and well, that was when he the went. lapper happened. Yeah. He stalled it, and the VRM kicked in. Yep. And he went. Oh, okay. Third, I don't need it. Yep. 16 points. Third third place is good, which, again, and man, and JT's point is just, it is so blatantly obvious because we watched it. Last, uh, again, as much as I've watched him ride and watching him in that heat with AP battling, and he's not over the top. And in the main, I mean, I guess to you it looked like he was, to me, there was never a point in that main that I went, He's really pushing the edge. It was well, just, maybe he was pushing, like, but it didn't look like it, and that's just that's just his I was style. Gonna, I, I think I don't know. I don't. I feel like in the in the races past here of this year, where he started to push it to try to go to the front and gone past that, say eighty percent. He does make. Mistakes. You can see it, okay. and you can see the mistakes building, I, and then something point. happens. Yeah, yeah. Where like last night, I never felt like that at all. He was just so dialed in with lines and everything, and he was so yeah. fast. Well, and, and fair point because when he he was against the ropes, so to speak, yeah, he did start making mistakes coming through, and he was smart enough to say, "Okay, yeah, I'm backing it down." Yeah. So I, that that's pretty uh, pretty dangerous at that age. <laughs> and again, yeah, and again, one thing he just. He if he just backs off in that corner and says I don't have to get him right here, he gets him in the next straightaway or something. Yeah, he goes three in out of that corner. The only guy that was doing it. His his threeing out of that corner I ability mean. to turn it up and make up a half a second in a corner mm-hmm. and pass two dudes in a corner is incredible. He does some incredible stuff. So, have you heard? Did you listen to Pulp with DB last week? Mm, yeah, maybe I missed what you're. Did you Did you hear? And I haven't I haven't hit up Daniel Blair yet to ask him if he's heard anything. But did you hear his theory of Jet will do this until he gets bored and moves to MotoGP? MotoGP, or did he mean MXGP? No. He said MotoGP. He dropped it several times. Oh, I know that. Like on a crowd rocket? Uh huh. I uh, I don't know. I mean, if he goes to MXGP, what's the difference going to be over there? He's going to go fifty-seven and zero. I don't know. It'd be sweet, but I, I mean that that's the thing is like Moto if he G- go, that would be pretty crazy because because as he said, he's like, dude, he's like, once he gets bored, he goes, he's going to look for the next challenge because he'll get bored long before he should retire. That'll be pretty incredible if he goes to MotoGP. Because <laughs> like, he'll be... That'd be unheard of. I, I mean, well, no, not really. There was a guy back in the day who did it. Uh, hmm. Did Bale do it? Was it Jean-Michel Bale? I don't think, no. Like, Jeff Ward got in Indy cars and no, stuff. No, 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 no. There is a dude that did MXGPs, came over and did motocross and supercross. I think it was Bale. I really do think it was Bale. Oh, uh, I don't know. And then went and did MotoGP up. also. I don't, I don't know. Somebody um, fact check us in the comments. Probably, yeah. But there is there is some guy from back like eighties, nineties era that did it. Um, and honestly, I could see it, man. I could see it. I can. I, I guess he's got like the Mark Marquez kind of connection. But well, I mean, the thing is, is like think about it here. The way this is going, uh, John Michelle Bale did go race. <sighs> see, my uh, brain is working. Well, I'm looking here. He did go do road racing. So, uh, the U.S. Grand Prix. Yeah, he did MotoGP. Bale did. Wow. Yeah, look wow. at that. Look at that pull look at there. This guy. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the thing is, is like it makes sense because think about it. If this trend continues, barring an in- injury, I mean, by the time he's 25, he could have four or five outdoor titles with multiple perfect seasons yep. and 
three or four Supercross titles easy. I, I think he... So then at that point, what are you doing? Yeah, but I, I think it all depends on if he's with Honda that whole time. If yeah. he rides this contract out and then Ducati comes in, they scoop him, then he's got a new challenge to try to figure Ducati out and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that gives him probably another two years, another three years, something but like still, that. But still, I mean, you're looking at 26, 27. I mean, he could be... And here's the other thing, too, is like, even if he gets on a different bike... Okay, we've seen it with Kenny. Kenny make that fucking 2012 Suzuki win. Okay, it so took him a while, though. doesn't matter. You put Jet on that thing... I think Jet wins within the first half of the first season. You put him on outdoors, he'll win instantly, too. I don't think there's any of these bikes you could put him on outdoors. He would not instantly yeah, win. He can adapt, too. Yeah. He did make some interesting comments on Paul. Where he's like, yeah, I only do three laps because I just adapt to the bike. Yeah. So, I really... Again, I it's super interesting that because he brought it up multiple times. I did times. hear him say that. Because um, I kept hearing him say MotoGP, and I was like, does he mean MXGP? No, no so. he fully means Moto. Because you're talking, like I said, by like 26, 27, it could just be like outside of chasing records, which which would probably depend upon how close he really is to McGrath's record, which is a whole nother thing. Did you see how... Yeah, just, <laughs> did you see Race Day Live? Uh, was McGrath on Race Day Live, uh-huh. or was he just on the night broadcast? No, he was on Race okay, Day Live. So second thing about that, I think that is hilarious that he goes on Pulp, and they're like, why haven't you done anything on the TV broadcast? And he's like, they haven't even called me, but uh-huh. you know, I'd love to. Yeah. Next round, there he, he is. There he is on <laughs> yeah. both, right? Yeah. And he's great. He's and, great. He's and, better than Ricky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then when Ricky fucking shoves it in his nose of like, well, how do you feel about talking about 72 with this kid? There is tension there. He's like, let me know when he gets to 20 or 30. <laughs> Which I find funny because I go, yeah, but MC, he like has more outdoor wins than you and he's only raced one season. Yeah. Like he's got the same amount of outdoor titles and more outdoor wins in his rookie year than you do. And then now we're into his Supercross rookie year of Supercross. Animal, I mean, it, it totally is. But at the rate we're seeing, and here's the thing, who is coming? Nobody's coming, but if you look at the stat, too, how many rounds we got? We're 11 in. 11 in, so we've got... We're 11 in. He's won five and podiumed... So how many we got left? Seven or eight. So uh, seven. We got six left. So he would have to win all six of the last ones to tie McGrath's rookie record. Yep. Or no, to beat it. McGrath's yeah. rookie year, he did 10. Yes. So, I mean, even that might be tough, but... I mean, it, yeah, it could be. Yeah. It, and, and again, I'm not necessarily saying that he's going to do things like no either way the kid is incredible and and i like the i like the low-key tension though because i think realistically for mcgrath this has never been a thing that's been in his viewpoint of like someone who could actually get there Stu is really good Stu won a lot of races but Stu hit the ground a lot. Yeah. So it was kind of one of those things yeah. of like, he's fast Stu, and he Stu could do this. Stu was the fast guy, but Stu didn't know how to turn it off. Yeah. And it, and I think, okay, looking at that, if you're a semi-conscious human being, you go, yeah, this kid's great and he's so, he's super fast, but I just don't ever think he's going to be able to put it together that many times without getting hurt type deal. Ricky was really good too. Ricky just wasn't fast. But Ricky wasn't that fast. So it was like, eh, okay. You know, now it's like, this kid has yeah. a shot. Yeah. Type also, deal. Plus, it took Ricky two years. Well, I want to clarify Supercross. my Ricky comment because somebody gave me some shit about it one time. I was like, Ricky wasn't the fastest. Uh, in Supercross, Ricky was not, not the, fastest. the fastest. Nope. Uh, David Villeman was kicking his ass in 02. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good thing Villeman went to a photo shoot because he, he <laughs> wouldn't have won. Yep. Uh, Carmichael wouldn't have won that year. Yep. Uh, 06, Stu was faster on that Cowie. He just kept tucking the front end, doing all that stuff. Um, I th- Reed had him covered in 04. There was just nobody. He just knew how to manage and get second every weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, what other title did he win? 05. I think if Stewart would have been healthy all the way through 05, those boys would have been in trouble too. Yeah. Um, but outdoors, different story. I think Ricky Whole, truly totally was the fastest story. guy outdoors. Yeah. Yep. So I don't know, man. We'll see where it goes. I like the low key tension. It's gonna be interesting Not to see how like it too. Yeah, yeah. it'll be interesting to see how McGrath kind of handles it if yeah. we as we get closer per yeah, se. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's still ninety nine percent chance wins this title here. Bar, yeah, barring I think an he's Eli Tomac. Yeah, situation he's looking from last year. really really good. Um, 
does he win all three next week? Because we got Triple Crown. Where are we going? St. Louis? St. Louis. So we're indoors. No mud. <laughs> indoors. Nice dirt. Yep. I don't know. Yeah, I think he does. It's hard to bet against it at this point. <laughs> yeah, his starts so. are dialed. Like it's, uh, yeah. Speaking of betting, you see what there's... Uh, there's a bet site now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I went to go do it, and it wasn't on there. I don't know. I got to stay off But anyway. Jet at plus 130 was like, give me that money. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, so if that comes back, I'm going to get my bets in early. Yeah. Um. All right. So fourth place, AP. Uh, and he rode really good, man. He rode and really well. this is just... I think this is a nice spot for him to slot in there. Like I said, four to eighth place there. And oh, who uh, who called breakout ride of the year? Breakout ride of the year, right there. And who would have thought it been a guy on a KTM? Yep. So uh, Ken Roxon gets fifth. He goes down. <laughs> in qualifying night. the second qualifying session. He doesn't get a great time. Goes down in the heat. Wins the LCQ. And then Yanks a second place start in the main. Unbelievable. I mean, like a fifth place for him was a win after uh, what I had heard a post-race interview with him, one of the pro circuit post-race. Yeah. And uh, he was out, I guess, doing some gardening, blowing some leaves around at the house this week, doing some yard work, and got like covered in pollen. <laughs> and, it, and his throat was all fucked up. And he was you know all... how that goes. It's terrible. Yeah. Oh, God, terrible. So he took some Dayquil or something. And got kind of drowsy and just like wasn't feeling himself all day. Unbelievable. And then uh, that's the same interview where he said it was the best fifth he's ever got, right? Pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Best fifth ever. Like, uh, pretty mind blowing. That's the only LCQ he's ever been in. That's wild. That's it's really very wild. wild. Crazy. And so. that's and that start was so good from the outside. Yeah, I missed it. I was just like, oh look, Ken Rocks. So good. He's just good at flat. Right, I missed the one in the main. Yeah. I missed the main event. So. Yeah. So anyway, uh, all right. Uh, okay. Eli Tomac, sixth. I don't know what's going on, man. I don't know what it is. I was expecting a lot more from the man. I'm a little nervous. It is like is the hunger not gonna, great. It's not going well. And I mean, it is not good starts. No. No, like he's got like like he, it's like Malcolm Stewart syndrome. Like he's there in the heat race and then gets in the main, cannot get a start, to can't save get his a, life, and, and then just gets bogged down. Quagmire. He's in a quagmire. Yeah, I mean he wasn't even really coming through the pack either. I mean I guess he did. He was in like ninth or so, but yeah. he stalled out when he got where he was at. Yeah. Either way, um, I don't know. I don't think it's as easy as what he thought it was going to be. It's and I don't think it's going how we all thought it was going to go. It's not great, man. It's not. It's sad to see (laughs) it is it's weird and it's weird to talk about him like this because he's one of the greats Mm -hmm. i think he goes down as one of the all-time greats it's almost getting a little eerily reminiscent of when chad reed kept coming back and it just kept not going Going awesome and it's like oh please just stop before things get really out of control yeah so I don't know, man. I hope he puts something together. It would be cool to see him win, like, the Denver race. Mm-hmm. That would be cool, but, man. Do that's... you see him line up for outdoors? Is he still hungry and just loves racing that much? No. You don't think so? Nope. He's earned enough points to be in for SMX, because last year I think the bubble was yeah, 150 or 170 like, they were talking about. That. It's 150s he's, at he's, 170 yeah, or some shit. So, so he's he's got enough points. He'll get into SMX if he wants to. And I think that's it. I don't know. It's uh But he's such a mystery that who would know? It's weird, dude. It's weird, but I guess uh I, I don't know, it just sucks that it's kinda going this way because in this sport and a lot of motorsports you're only as good as your mm-hmm. last race kind of thing. Yeah. And people quickly forget like the, the stats he has. You go the, back a year ago he had the red plate and was ripping. Oh, and and the title in the bag. Mm-hmm. Um a guy that won three outdoor titles in a row. Yeah. Like, yep. Not a lot of two time Supercross champions out there. Would have been real rare air if he had three. Three, yep. Um, I mean, yeah, you look at this guy and all the wins he's got, too. What's he third out all time Supercross wins on us? Is he third or is he second? Is he, he second? Pa- he passed Stu. He is second. He's second. God, yeah. it's just so. I mean, you start thinking about that kind of stuff. It's like, damn. Do you want to know the crazy thing? They were talking about this on the recap show, too. His average start place is like 7.3. Kenny's is 6.9. Whole career? No. Or this year? This year. 
Six point nine is a number. <laughs> I'm just saying it is wild that Kenny's won a race yeah, and, is, so. and is essentially relevant. Yeah, and six, Tomac's nowhere to be seen. Yeah. Kenny's got that six point nine. He's eating. He's eating. <laughs> All right. Uh, seventh place, Hunter Lawrence. He's riding with a hurt shoulder and wins that heat. They got the uh, other situation figured out. No idea. Haven't heard an update recently. It seems shoulder like they, seems to be the situation right now. Well, it seems like the other situation was getting was taken care of. He seemed to be energized at the race, all that. Can we talk about that issue? Can we just say it? Nope, we're not going to talk about it. Okay. Um, okay. Damn. All right. Uh, um, well, well, how about a Lawrence Brother heat race 450 win? Sweet. First time ever. Brothers have swept the heat race. Kind of cool. It's kind of neat. Um, here's the funny thing. Did you hear our discussion last week about him and Justin Cooper? No. And and Justin and I were like, man, it just seems like Justin Cooper's had such a better year. He's had such a better year. And then you look up the finishes, and it's like they're the same person. They're the exact same, which we kind of... The only difference is is that Justin Cooper has that qualifying speed, so he's mm-hmm. at the top of the board on qualifying, and you're like, holy shit. Where, like, Hunter Lawrence doesn't have that. But outside yeah. of that, they both have a DNF. They both have a... <laughs> we we kind of assumed they would be both about the same guy. Yeah, so. which is which is basically what they are. And to be fun and just for funsies, it's like you have Hunter's seventh and Justin Cooper's eighth. And I think it's a. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, these are great rides for these guys. Yeah, Hunter Lawrence. He can. He was got. He was great at the end of the main last night too. Mm-hmm. He just like he just keeps trucking. Yep. He's and like I, a. He's like very dungy ish. And I think outdoor he'll be a little bit better. Yeah, I think Hunter, he'll be a little bit better. But yeah. I think this is essentially where he slots in, man. Which yeah, is yeah. I, his two fifty ch- title last year, it was very dungeonish. Wasn't yeah. flashy. He just nope. Put his head to the grindstone and did it. So and I mean the thing is too is uh, once you kind of get past like once you get past the next couple of years, okay, Tomac's gonna retire. Roxon's gonna retire. Webb's probably gonna retire. Two or him up three into years. The then he's like right up into a top five guy for the yeah. night for the last few years of his career and like okay sweet make so. a solid living uh justin cooper eighth got anything on him uh no i, I would like a 191 jersey if you can go to your parents house and find one <laughs> jesus we're just not getting off that one <laughs> yeah uh barsha ninth i heard he's much happier with the bike now uh can we call tcd and see if they're the ones doing a suspension <laughs> i don't know i was told he doesn't have that I, I know he is doing, he's got an outside service center doing the suspension. They're doing his setting. <laughs> okay. So I had read, and, and this is courtesy of Michael Lindsay. He's good at finding all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vital MX Pit Bitch. Check them out. Love that. Love that. Hmm. If you can go through and look at some of those, it's cool. Interesting. But uh, AP is the only one that's on in-house production suspension from KTM Group. Interesting. Uh, Sexton is on his own company shock setting, which is what Webb tried to do, and they told him no. Obviously, we know the fork situation. Um, Webb, in all fairness, Webb told him that he wanted a stock frame too, and they told him no. Oh my god! Like, like to the point that that's why he went and bought the bike. Yeah. Because he took the frame to the shop and told him put this on the bike, and they told him no. At least and, that's the story I'm hearing. Well, that'd be funny if you walked in with. I could with just, frame? I could just oh, see I could him totally walking see through him the front door it. with a frame. Totally see him doing that. It. Is funny. I would like to ask him that. Like, did you just walk through the front door with the frame? That's. I mean, yeah. Maybe, maybe at some point I'll get back to another race this year and I'll see that. And yeah, yeah. Actually um, ask him. And then I think Mookie and Barsha were running like factory outers and stuff like that but internally uh there was an independent shop doing their stuff interesting so Hmm. um it could be tcd it could be uh aeo Mm -hmm. it could be power band like any of those wp suspension companies Hmm. interesting yeah i don't know the uh him i heard him and mookie were going to do testing Mm -hmm. in california last week so Hmm. Yeah, I mean, Barsha's gotten a little better, but it ain't. No, it ain't Barsha. No, no. I mean, and but then again, too, you go who's in front of him, and it's like who's he beating that's in front of him. You know, who did he beat last year that's in front of him? Kind yeah, of him, right? between that, and then you throw in Jet, and then like you've got Hunter and Jay Coop ahead of him here, which is like technically, yeah, I can see them kind of beating him because they're beginning. Yeah, they're he's beating. tail end. Yeah. yeah. So, so is it as bad as it looks? 
I think it's, it's kind of kind of where I think it's kind of right where you slot in. Yeah. Essentially, I'm not really panicking. So maybe on it's that. just not as bad as he looks, and we're just panicking for no reason. But for the next guy, Ooh, who is the next guy? It's your coworker, Jason Anderson. Oh, my coworker. Both this my is, coworkers didn't do too good last well, night. I'm not worried about AC. AC is what it is. He there, knows. He but, understands. But yeah, what the hell is that? It's not great at all. His gear looked good though. It's not great at all. Gear bike combo looks it. <laughs> okay, let me let me throw you this mm-hmm. TLR tinfoil hat here. Ooh, you ready? That Club MX ain't helping. No, nope, that's not it. No, actually, have you watched any of the club videos with a minute? Uh the one of him like no, 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 like the I behind just, the scenes. Song? I just yeah, I just watched the one yesterday or the other day where before Indianapolis and. <laughs> He was riding with Phil, and Phil was pissed off because He's March Banks. March makes yeah, and then and then he goes, "God, just give me some fucking space, man." And Ando's like, "Hey, make sure to tell the AMA when we get the next race that you need five second head start on everybody." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, let's go to that for for a second. The Club MX thing is very interesting to me, actually. Okay. Um, like he he had mentioned, and nobody had really asked him about it until just recently, and he was like, yeah, I didn't find any places to ride in Florida, which is weird because there's a lot of places in Florida that he could probably go ride. It's almost like he doesn't want to ride with high-end competition. Maybe. He doesn't want to go ride with a Roxton, doesn't want to go ride with a Sexton. Well, he did that for years there with What's-His-Nuts, so... Yeah, so maybe he just... I mean, he's a low-key guy, and that's mm-hmm. the club atmosphere, so... And he also mentioned he's going to go back out, go back there for outdoors. Hmm. for some stuff but i thought he was going to be a lot better on these ruddy beat up tracks because of that um i mean you go down there and watch some of the stuff those guys ride during the oh week. yeah it's terrible yeah it's terrible. and I, I thought it would i thought it would pay off um well let me tell you my tlr tinfoil hat here and you well, tell hang me on, hang oh, on. okay here's what i got too i almost think that him riding there with the freddie norans and riding like with those guys no disrespect it's making him slower well that could be or, let's hear what you got. TLR tinfoil hat here. No, put it on. He could be throwing away this season mm. to get out of his contract early mm. to go to Triumph next year. Um, I don't know who they'd grab. I don't know who Kawasaki would get. I don't think he gives a shit who Kawasaki's going to grab, and I don't know either. Uh, but but knowing Kawasaki and how legitimate their paperwork is, unless you're putting something in your locker like Davy Millsaps, like you're <laughs> you're locked in. I don't know. I don't think there's no way of getting out of that one. I mean, I've heard that last year there was there was a come to Jesus moment with him partway through the year of like you got to get your shit together here, which is partially what happened which well, then started the child yeah that. which then started this year off and a little bit better leg here obviously as we saw mm-hmm. however now seeing how it's kind of starting to spiral it really makes me go hmm. oh they're having a conversation with them i know the but the japanese but, are not happy right now but that's what i'm saying is is that is he purposefully and he has a tendency doing to this do that. to do yeah. stuff because he wants to go to, back to his. I, he mentioned his, that when he was he like was taking dives on purpose when he rode for Husky after Bobby left because he just didn't want the pressure and shit. Like I said, kind of yeah. TLR ten four. I see where there. you're going. With it, it would not surprise me at all in this off season if we get an announcement that Kawasaki has released him, and the next day there's an announcement that he is riding Triumph four fifties next year, and it's almost. You know what? It, to branch off that a little bit, mm-hmm. the Triumph Compound is on the East Coast in Georgia. Not that far, not far from, from Club. club. Yeah, so he's kind of getting his feet wet in the area. See how we're pulling a uh, see how we're pulling a, a Coach Rob here, and we're just reading the tea leaves. Yeah, I, I I guess you're right. Some of the club guys, when that track is shitty, they go over and ride at the the Triumph Compound. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there's no doubt he's going to Triumph, but it's just a matter of like, getting out of that contract. I don't know how that's going to work. Put some weed in your locker. I don't know. I mean, what do you do if he just doesn't show up to race? I, I don't know, man. You going to sue him? Do Davy's locker. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just one of those things like the way these... Cause, yeah, when here. you start going down that tinfoil hat idea and start putting some pieces together... I mean, when you go, he went second, 
and then the mud he was 12 and then five four five two and then it's been ten nine six four ten and he was up toward the front in the beginning of last night too and the thing yeah and he faded mm-hmm. so it just makes me wonder now there also has been a theory thrown out of like well maybe new bike they haven't got it dialed it's dialed in but not dialed in for these soft ass ruddy tracks like this mm-hmm. yeah i but, guess i could see that but i don't know man i don't know there's there's something interesting there and if there wasn't this triumph team that is his old mentor running it and the guy all the guys he likes Mm -hmm. and they're gonna go 450 racing next year because joey already dropped that little tidbit if there wasn't all of that then Mm -hmm. i would be like man i don't know it's got to be a bike issue or something but because there's all of that yeah i you know i could see that it makes me go hmm yeah i'll put some feelers out this week. Who are you going to put some feelers out to? I got all sorts of people I'll put feelers out to. Oh. We'll see what happens here. So, Should all right. I DM him? You think he'll respond? We'll get him in, in show DM again? Uh, I, you can DM him, but I don't think we'll get Maybe I'll response. go in the employee directory and get his number. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Get his I number, don't think text him. There. I don't think it's in there. I mean, it has to be, right? He's an it employee. Be. I don't know. See if AC's on there. Let's call him live on the show right now. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not doing any of that kind All of stuff. Right. So I'm on the sales side, not the race team side. All right. Uh, so Stu is 11th. You hear the controversy about his dad last week? Being an asshole to people So I commented Indy? on that Facebook post. Did you? I did. What'd you say? So I was like, hey, uh, devil's advocate here, but uh, if my son is racing this treacherous 450 main in a ruddy-ass track and performing at a really high level, and I'm in tune because I enjoy watching my son race... I'm probably going to be an asshole when people are probably trying to have a conversation with me while I'm watching my kid race. You know, and I if thought it was the a, same if it was thing. after the checker flag uh, flu, yeah, he probably would have been a whole different guy. Yep. But if you're in tune, you're locked in. Think about it. Put yourself oh, in yeah. his shoes. No, no, no. I'm hey, not. Hey, man, can I have a picture? Can I have an autograph? Blah, blah, blah. And then they want to throw the, he took the kid's seat or something. Yeah. I think that was the, probably the last fucking thing he was thinking about. He was watching his, watching his kid out there yep. on this sketchy-ass Austrian Husqvarna. Yeah. Doesn't know what it's going to do. Yep. He's probably grabbing the first empty seat and sitting in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Get off his ass. I think it was... Uh very blown out of proportion there, but... Yeah, it seemed like a very white trash post to me. So is this Stu's farewell tour? I don't know, man. It might be. Hmm. We'll get, get him a fishing boat. We'll get to it when we get into the halftime report here a little yeah, bit. Yeah, get him but... a fishing boat, and uh, but he's just very mediocre. Yeah. Steel Frame Gang has not been good. Uh, Benny Bloss goes 12th there, and uh, you did, know, from did, broken collarbone to racing he, again, <laughs> this broken collarbones are not a thing anymore. Did he just go to Cody Shock Soccer, or what? So from what I understand, <laughs> it wasn't actually broken, but it is separated from the clavicle, and it was misdiagnosed mm. as a broken one. So I'm I'm on board with the pulp conspiracy theories on Cody Shock as well. That it's not really broken, they're just doing it for publicity? And he was walking around with a backpack on and shit? Yeah. The Cody Shock one's very weird. Weird. Yes. We'll call it that. And he's not an idiot either. Like, why no. not try to milk some publicity? Yeah. Either, but. So, anyway. Yeah. So uh, he did come from a couple positions back in that main. Heard he was so. really stoked on his ride last night. Good which for Benny. Doesn't surprise me. That's a good ride for Benny. Good for him. I would Beat a Benny. not have picked him in fantasy. Sorry. Nope. nope. Uh, Mitchell Oldenburg shows up because their team just randomly shows up to races mm-hmm. uh, on a 450 13th. Okay. Yeah, good for him. AC fourteenth farewell tour. Just riding no big deal. In. Just riding her in, getting out there, getting getting some reps in. Vince Freeze on a four fifty randomly fifteenth. Okay, it's my guy. Good rider. Uh, Shane McElrath, sixteenth there. <laughs> just just uh, top five guy now. Just top five guy now. Uh, Ty Masterpool was wearing tuxedo uh, gear for seventeenth. Hey, in the 450 main. In the 450 main, For not baby. being a Supercross guy. Derek Drake, 18th. Mm-hmm. Cade Clayson, 19th. Not in the way. Ryan Brees. Can we talk about that LCQ? Oh, the LCQ. Dude, I thought he was going to kill Vince. Brees and uh, Dude, I was so pumped because I was like, Brees is not scared. He's not so scared. Yeah. If Brees takes him high, he is going to come back and kill him. Yes. And then Chiz, and then Chiz just over the bars. Oh, oh my God. That LCQ was incredible. The 251 was kind of boring. That one was just so 
good. Oh, yeah. Chiz was glitching in the Matrix on the line. Oh, man. Like, all, all the weirdness has happened in there. Yeah, yeah. I was going to bring that up in a tinfoil hat. Okay. Uh, Rod Bell, 21st. Did and, not have that on my bingo card. Yeah. And Mitchell Harrison went down 22nd. Rough night for him. I've been making some mains lately, Talk too. Talked to so. him at Indy. Yeah. I'll told him I was going to DM him. He said he would come on the show. Mm. He then said that if I DM him, he will block me. So I'm not really sure how this is going to go. Huh? <laughs> We were joking around about oh, it. Oh, oh gosh! I was like, "What in the hell?" You we thought were, we were joking? Was we're... Justin like the door opener on that one? Y- y- yeah. Did he know Justin? Yeah, yeah. Him and Justin were talking. Yeah. Recognized him. Yeah, and then I went over there and I said, "Well, at least I'm not interviewing you while you're on Pro Circuit in a Geico Honda shirt anymore." So that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> he laughed at you. Uh, yeah, yeah. We had a good. He said, good... "Yeah, you're a spode." Yeah, pretty much. So. He said, "What way do you run your grips?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, all right. <laughs> That's been your uh, 450 race recap brought to you by our friends at Gutterworks. Always well hung like Cameron Sackadoo. Mm-hmm. And now we will jump into your Complete Racing Solutions halftime report. Again, Complete Racing Solutions there in CoachRobStore.com. Make sure to check them out. Link in the description down below. You want to talk Silly Season, Ducati, or Holster Co. Reload Rant. Mm, what's your Pro Flow mini moment of the race? That's in the 250 class. Oh, well, my pro flow mini moment of the race isn't in the 250 class. Was it in the 450 class? It, it was. Oh, well, you should have said it during the 450s then. Well, we should do one of each. Okay, go ahead. So your pro flow f- mini, mini moment, moment of, of the, the race, race for the 450 class. Go ahead. You my mini moment one. was those guys jumping the wall. I thought that shit was kick ass. Super cool. Uh, Sketchy, I love, but cool. Yeah, like uh, little things like that that separate the elite guys. Kind of yep. like uh, I was going to bring it up when we were talking about Anderson where there's that video of him in slow-mo and you just drops the bike with two whoops to go and mm. just doubles out into the corner. Yep. And then Freddie's just like bouncing across him and hits like <laughs> the third rut. Um, no, the the wall thing was, was super badass. Webb didn't do it super clean, yep. but he was doing it. Um, I think Plessinger pulled it out halfway through the main. Um, and obviously Jet greasing that thing was, I think, uh, made a lot of time up for him. That's yep. where the time was coming from. So that... I guess maybe not a mini moment, but little small no, things no, like that. That's a mini moment for sure. Those those little small things like that. Those are badass. So okay. Um. All right. So Ducati comes out and they were running. Isn't the Italian National Championship? And they win a moto in the first race. Yep. The Pino one. I think. I think so. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to watch it and just see. It's. Um, but either way. I mean, I haven't watched it either, but it's very interesting that. In their first race, when they don't even have their full blown production bike done yet, supposedly they're winning races. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> let's, think. Let's put it this way it makes it seem super interesting for them coming in in 26 here. Is that when they're coming 26? Mm-hmm. So they got a whole nother year of development. Yeah, because they won't have the bike in stores until late next year. Wow. Is um, what I've been told. So they got to have. Are they still riding prototype stuff then? technically well it's like that bike release that they did that bike release they were very clear on this is not the final product Mm. um so i assume it's still technically in the prototype phase or final final rendition phase where they're just changing little things here before they get it Mm -hmm. uh uh sent out to get production started but like i said the fact that they come out because lupino's good yeah yeah but he's no rock star when it comes to riding we would call him a mid-pack MXGP dude. So for him to come out in the first race and win on a brand new bike like that, I'm like, ooh. Yeah, it was just an Italian series, though, too, right? I don't, yeah, but it's still, I'm like, um, mm. yeah. It, it's not like he's coming out and riding a cane and ale. Hell, so. yeah. I don't know, man. It's uh, it's interesting. Let's put that way. It's something it I is. thought would be interesting to bring up. So. Yeah, so they're coming. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think they go after Jet and try to sign him, but. It just depends on how bored he is at Honda and what that paycheck is. Yeah. Because he's going to max out his contract to a certain point, and they're not going to pay him anymore. I think he's going to be looking at it. Well, yeah, especially if he wins this year and stuff, I think you're going to be looking at a, a $5 million base salary minimum, probably with little to no bonuses for championships because that's yeah, just going to be the they're expectation. They're going to want to recoup their money at some point. They're mm-hmm. a business. Yep. Um. So, yeah, I, that'll be very interesting. Um. I'd be love to know the ins and outs of it with Myrtle there because okay. of because he's good at his job and these guys like we all know However, we all know the Ricky thing of um, like just give me just give me what you would pay me total because yeah. I'll win it anyway. I uh, I did hear an interesting tidbit about Myrtle though. Okay, go ahead. Is he part of the Illuminati? Off the off the off the cusp here. 
Okay, off go the, ahead. Off the record. Oh, okay. We're on the record. Oh, we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it on the no, show. No, I don't oh. know how much truth there is to it, but there is some truth to it, and it's kind of... Okay, all right. Let me just write that down here. If he's listening, he's probably not listening. Mertz notes. Is he listening? Probably not. Who knows? If, Maybe. Hey, There's... Mertz, if you listen, just uh, DM us. It's cool. <laughs> you can text me. Isaac will give you my number. Yeah, we'd love <laughs> to have you on, actually. Um. But... Okay, Holster Co. Reload rant here. Man, you know what's great? We finally got a damn injury report about Max Volan. <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that. I was going to put it in my field report this week in the yeah. marketing section. Where's the PR for our 250 rider? There isn't. There hasn't been one until no. literally this week. Yeah, and he put one on his Instagram himself. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. And we finally got, oh, yep, hip issue, complications, will not be back for Supercross. Yeah, it would have been nice to know. It would have been nice to know weeks ago when it happened. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, what has that been, over a month now? It was been January, right? Been a while. It has to be January, so. Yeah, before that. I mean, like, guys, just... Tell us what the hell is going on. This is very simple. I don't understand just, it. I like, dude. You are. There are literally very clear pictures and videos of you laying on top of a tabletop, sprawled out, hurt. Yeah, I, I, I thought we, we were can't. starting to maybe turn a corner in our sport, but I think we uh, definitely aren't turning the corner. There's anymore. two ways that's going to work where it's going to change. Number one, with the uh, Netflix thing that is supposedly happening, mm-hmm. and number two, uh, the betting thing here is going to cause that information to start to have to be mandatory legalized yep mm-hmm. we're gonna have to have injury reports etc so we'll see but that's my holster coat reload rant it's just let's just can we can we get some damn injury reports when you actually yeah. get hurt yeah i i don't even have a reload rant i can't even think of anything i'm pissed about right now okay all right now let's talk last thing here for the complete racing solutions halftime report let's talk a bit of silly season 2025 all right here. let's rip it off with the Deegan danger zone <laughs> or however you do it no we're not we're not uh, doing that we, we got well, lots guess, of well, serious talks with the Deegan clan and kawasaki that's what i've heard yes so that's my other so we we already kind of talked about uh the whole anderson possibly throwing it to go to triumph next year my other thing that i've been talking about this week would be anderson rides out his contract next year okay or gets hurt early on changes teams mid-season maybe that could be a situation too yeah anyway um prado obviously going there we've talked about this Every, it's kind of like the worst kept secret out there at this point. Kind of like when the, Chase the was Prado going to KTM. One? Yeah, is that Prado is going there? I mean, why not? Like, why? Just, yeah, he's coming to America. That's the team he's going to. Why not tell us? Yep. And then, um, uh, and then Deegan moves there in twenty six. Whether yeah, he two a four fifty? Yes. Yeah, I would. I would assume that. I think. Uh, I mean, I who knows? They're doing their WWE shit, but. There had been the talk going around, like, we want to go to 450s right off the bat, like, mm-hmm. next year kind of thing. Yep. I don't think that's happening. I don't think they go next year. I no. really think it's a 26 move. Yeah. I really think it's a 26 and, move. Yeah, and if it's, you know, like I said, the the Japanese want to win. They're seeing Anderson and Cinturillo. They're seeing their investments not pay off. Yep. Um, You know, they're going to want Deegan, and they better set up something with the whole family. They better mm-hmm. get him out of those can ams and and for me, I as a, a fan of Kawasaki, unbiasedly, <laughs> uh, man, with some with the with the new side by side that's coming and and it's kind of right up in that K and M category that's yep. going to compete with him. Yep, get him in it. Yep, get his old man in it. Yep, um, just give him the whole package. Uh the only other thing is, are the Deegans are they going to play ball? In the Japanese culture, like company, combines. I mean, they're doing it right now with Star. Uh, I, Star is factory, but Yamaha, I mean, so he starts throwing that. bikes down and shit like that. They're gonna have a talk to him. They're gonna have a talk with him. You know, how's that gonna go? I mean, you don't think they were doing that? They did that with him last year at Star. You don't think Yamaha called and said anything? No. I, but I don't understand because Star is the factory Yamaha team, which means they have to deal with the Japanese. Uh, but it's it's a little less. So look, it ain't it ain't straight 
here we it, go again with being Coach Rob, and we're just reading the tea leaves. When you factor in the side by side thing that they can sign the rest of the family for, mm-hmm. you factor in he wants to go to a 450, which they can sign him for because they'll have Prado yeah. and then him, so 1A, 1B type shit. And then you factor in that he can still wear that monster claw. I mean, yeah. it's just a done deal. Yeah, the the monster claw, monster will step up with some money if they mm-hmm. need to. Um, at the dealer meeting when I was there, and it, it's very well known within the company right now. Their their plan by twenty thirty is to be number one in the side by side market. Yep. Um, and why not get a marketing juggernaut like that? Yep. Because so, they do a lot of side by side stuff, and you could sign it, and then you've got Haley in them, and you've got Brian in them, and you've got all the kids in them. Yep. No, it all makes sense, man. It yeah, all makes yeah. sense. I so. think it would be re- really cool. Um. Yeah, bring I get it on. a seventy-five percent chance it happens at this point. There's still a small chance it doesn't, but I give it a seventy-five percent. Yeah, chance I've heard it a does. number. I know about where the number's starting, and it's fucking big for a rookie four fifty rider. But isn't it? Uh, I'm thinking because I know we've talked kind of off the air of some of the budgetary stuff they were talking about or whatever. Isn't it? Uh, isn't a big chunk of that going to go to Prado though? Or were they talking that for each type deal? I don't think Prado's contract is going to be this number. You don't think so? So I'll tell you what, this number that I've heard is a million dollars more than what Tomac was paying, getting paid. Yeah. Well, I don't think they're throwing that at Prado. Yeah. I don't know. Um, all right, so staying in the silly season thing here, does AP stay at KTM? Because he's on a one-year deal. Uh, I don't know. I think he does, man. He's the only guy that seems to be happy on that bike and making moves happen. They were talking. I think AP seems to be in a good spot. They were talking that they don't really know where else he would go, which is true, unless he makes like a lateral move to say Husky. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that would be uh, not good. Yeah. But outside of that, I don't really see. Cause again, too, it's like, who are they going to pick up to ride? Um, right I think now? he's just good where he's at. I think uh, so too. And he's, and he's making it work. Like, look at the year he's having. So. Yep. Um, and then there's a big talk that Craig and Malcolm are both done at Husky after this year. We heard the other day. I don't know where he got that information. Dylan might be going there. That's not good, but I don't know where, where that information come either. from. Do you I, know? I don't know. We never, he never responded to that. Um, But, I mean, I could see... I could see a Malcolm Stewart and a Christian Craig use that uh, that factory connection uh, mm-hmm. connection, yeah. factory connection connection, yeah, <laughs> with uh with Christian's uh, father in law there. Uh, maybe those two go get on Hondas or or do some kind of a route like that. Maybe some more support goes over to Phoenix and they just kind of do some trading around there. Maybe that could um, be. Or uh, not sure what Dean or the Wiener's doing, but I think there's a spot at Firepower Honda for those guys that yep. are kind of on their tail end. Yep. Um, but I think, like, Craig, I think, goes to, like, a Phoenix route, does something on his own that where he can take his Fox gear money. Yep. Um, and same thing would happen to hap- would have to happen for Stewart because he ain't going to get out of seven. No, not a chance. Um, so maybe a Phoenix route or something. Maybe. What do you think his seven, seven deal is worth? What do you think they're paying him? I don't know. I think there's a lot of family value there, though, too. It's his brother's company. It's his family's company. I don't think he's making a ton of money. I mean... I... But think about that, though. I got a stew banner in my in my garage right now. Yeah. It's a Suzuki banner in my garage. Don't <laughs> tell anybody. In your garage when you work for Kawasaki? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, now the whole thing. But internet it's him knows. tossing this fat whip. It's sick. And I was looking at it the other day, and I was just like, think about what a boss-ass move that is to where you just create your own gear company and Mm -hmm. just elevate modern gear. Yeah. And you name it seven. Yes. After your number. Yes. What a badass move. Way things have to happen, bro. That's pretty baller. It's... And I don't know what he was paying himself. Probably not a lot, but... I don't know. I don't know. Probably sold a hell of a lot of gear though, which is weird though because it's expensive. I don't it's so s- expensive. When you go to the track, do you see a lot of it? I see quite a bit of seven. There was quite a bit when like Hodges I was wearing it too. I don't feel like I see as much of it, which is I don't see as much anymore. Which is why I'm like, man, like how are you really? <laughs> hey, how about the douchebags out there that were wearing just the tank top part of their seven jersey with their fucking biceps out oh, while they were riding? <laughs> yeah, that happens. <laughs> that happens too. I'm just like, oh man. 
Let's just put the whole put, put but, the whole jersey on. Seven changed the way gear was looked at. Yeah, um, he came out and did that, and and then not far long after, Fox came out with some some skimpy shit. Yeah. Now Barsha's pants are so tight you can barely get them on. You know who I think is changing the gear game right now? Who's that? Uh, Canvas. Yes. I think that is the way of the future, where you're going to be able to go in and select kind of your design and fit, per se, Mm -hmm. and then put on your own logos and stuff, much like you do with graphics companies. I've got quite a bit of guys uh, that I'm seeing wearing it. Um, Shout out to Rod. I don't know if Rod's listening to this, but I know some of Rod's boys listen to this. Uh, Shout out Tyler. I know you listen. But uh, he did some canvas gear where it looked like the old alloy gear super cool um so it's like the alloy like rasta looking stuff i had a set when i was on 65s and he just put his own logo in there um and i think he got some no fear stuff remade but it wasn't it didn't say actual no fear yeah but like similar yeah you can do shit like that yeah and i think that that kind of a la carte thing Mm -hmm. i think that's a thing i need to order some canvas gear because i'd love to see what it's actually like and stuff i Um, think it'd be sick like it's uh it's like nike id how cool it was yep. to like go make your own shoes and shit back in the day yep. i always said alpine stars or garnet should do like a nike id kind of thing mm-hmm. where you could design your own boot that'd be super cool too like somebody would pay a thousand bucks for that you know what I mean? oh yeah, yeah so. easy easy so yeah um anything else silly season you can think of <laughs> um man i i don't uh can't really think of anything right now 450 class everybody's pretty well locked up i heard the only other thing I've kind of heard is that Ken might not be on a Suzuki next year. Oh, really? Roxon? I don't remember where I heard he was going, but I mm. heard he might not be on a Suzuki next year. Mm. Is that a, uh, like Hep getting support from another manufacturer or him just going to a different team altogether? I think I heard kind of different teams. I don't know. Wouldn't it be wild if he went and... Uh, if Road he goes Star. back to your Reeves team and goes back to the Honda. Well, he could do that. Or what about Star? I mean, that would be wild. Tomac leaves and he comes in. It's like a veteran's retirement home over there, kind of. I mean, it would be sick. Cause I don't know. What about him and Webb being on the same team? I don't really see that. I think they're fine. I think it was that was a before thing. Now I think everything's cool. Yeah, they both they, got kids. Everybody's, yeah, I think they figured it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the only other outlier I would say, but... It, tomac debunks it is he can go do his own program wherever he wants yeah like tomac does that so Mm -hmm. he could go to florida and do whatever yeah i don't know man be interesting yeah we'll see he rode a yamaha and didn't like it though yeah be interested with that star bike nah he rode the club bike and it didn't can you imagine him and hurlings on the same team Okay, no, while we're talking silly season, <laughs> we're, we got to eat a little crow here. I don't got to eat shit. Hurling's going to ride eating, for Star when he comes over. Okay, well, I'm eating crow because I was like, yeah, I think maybe the Star facility was shut down because Hurling's was there riding. No, it was Chase Sexton. And Hurling's. Chase Sexton confirmed by RC because RC was driving around Tallahassee and saw his ass. And Hurling's. No. Yeah, dude. No, Sexton and Hurling's did not test together. They sure did. They yeah. Sure did. Okay. Look, stars just have to spend a gazillion dollars a year. They got unlimited. Can you imagine budget. that test day though? You pull in and it's Hurlings and Sexton just having a fucking dick measuring contest. Yes. Yes, I can, and I would be hard as morning wood from the time I maybe, I saw it. Maybe that's why Webb's arms were morning it's, wood. It's exactly it. So, uh, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, supposedly that was Sexton. Now, I haven't reached out to my sources to confirm yet. With what? That Sexton? Yeah. Who's your I didn't watch that video you sent me. I was in the middle of doing something. Uh, and I, like, it was, it at was Title 2-4 with yeah. uh, Villapoto. And, uh, what did he say exactly? He was like, yeah, because uh, they played a clip of him after the race talking about, like, basically that the bike was shit. And they're like, is he reconsidering his decision? Like, he had to have ridden other bikes. And RC was like, yeah, he rode the Star Bike and liked it. And I know that for a fact because I caught him in Tallahassee. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it sounded like Carmichael was like driving around town and saw him at the gas station or some shit. <laughs> what are you doing here? Don't worry about it. <laughs> interesting. Super interesting. So, all right. Uh, any Anything else for the halftime report? Oh, any man. Any other news, notes, anything? Oh, um, oh. Our sport has finally made it to mainstream as far as NBA, NFL, 
um, that these athletes are now on MK Ultra and they're glitching out in the Matrix. Oh, Kyle God. Chisholm was glitching on the starting line. I don't know what that was. Um, I don't know Kyle what Chisholm the hell is happening. Is, uh, he's AI. He's AI. He's not real. He's a robot. He's 50 years old and still shredding. Uh, Kyle Chisholm is AI. Okay. We saw it. All right. Okay. He was glitching out on the glitch. He's glitching on the on starting the start line, line yep. which was super weird to see. Super duper weird to see. So, all right. That's been your complete racing solutions halftime report. And now we will get into 250 race recap brought to you by our friends at 50 graphics for all your custom graphics needs. Make sure you check them out. 50 graphics.com link in the description down below. Well, Levi what? kitchen is taking a step and Levi. he is now the man ripping. In I the haven't 250 seen West. dominate a race like that in a while. 20-second win. Eight, I mean, put eight seconds on him in the heat race. His starts were phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just... It was it was incredible. It was Kawasaki. <laughs> Kawasaki. They're back. Let the good times roll. Pro Circuit. Pro Circuit's back. Uh, uh, Mitch is literally letting the good times roll. He... See what I did there? Yeah. He, uh, uh, he's got two red plates, though. He, yeah. I mean, like, when's the last time Mitch Payton's had that? It's been years. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was just a that was just a perfect ride for him. Hometown race, mm-hmm. hometown track there, home crowd, everything. And he just did everything absolutely effing perfect last night. Yeah. Wire to wire. I don't know if the hometown thing really made that much of a difference. I think he just came in there wanting to prove everyone that he can win something beside a, a triple crown. Um, really put in the work in the off weeks there. Uh, I'm sure the hometown thing did have something to do with it. He was um, pretty pumped up about that. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine hearing the crowd like that just for you? No, no, I cannot. Pretty damn cool. Yep. But uh, no, cool way to do it for him. He's on cloud nine, um, and I th- I hope this is a, a sign to Mitch Payton and whoever else is kind of running that organization and making the riders do what the riders do. Um, this is the first time they've let a guy go off and do his own program and look what's happening mm-hmm. um looks good dude looks I really good seen that ride last night he is the guy now that i'm like okay he can move to 450s yeah he'd probably be really good on 450 yep so we'll see how that goes i think he's only got like a six point lead now or something like that eight i think so- eight over rj's his only guy and i rj's a wreck at ralph dude Hold on. So he's got 131 points, and RJ has 123. So eight. Yeah. Yeah. So eight points. Um, so not jet level firmly in control, but we're getting there. I mean, when you're looking at your competition and the the history they've had, and we're gonna get to that here in just you're a gonna, sec. I know. I know. I'm but you're gonna be lose feeling my mind. You you got to be feeling pretty good about that. Um, I'm good at this stuff. The only I'm really good at this. <laughs> The only other interesting thing that I think is going to happen like is, is the uh, the shootout when that comes around. You know, where's he at? Ride, if he effing rides like that, dude, he's going to be winning, if not on the podium minimum. Yeah. At the shootout. So, yeah, he'll uh, get starts, I guess, the yeah. pro circuit boys. Um, RJ gets second place. Straight up said he had nothing for him. <laughs> What's new? Did you did you get the subtle drop where he's like, yeah, there's a stadium next door with a roof? Uh, I did not, but that is funny <laughs> that that was brought up because guess what? I don't think we need that stadium because if you look, that stadium wasn't that full. No, no, so, and, it's, and it's soft and shitty. There's snow in there one time. Yeah, but. yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, uh, th- this was a good ride by RJ, but RJ's mm-hmm. done RJ things this year. Let's see what's his what's his finishes like because I don't. Well, remember. the RJ thing I remember is he didn't need to pass the two dudes in front of him, and he Larry looped it at that wet race and got like sixth instead of third. Yeah, so he goes one nine <laughs> six two one two. So like very RJ of like I just can't hold it together every single race. I mean, you take no. away that that ninth and give him even a fifth. And all of a sudden, he's he's got the red plate. Yeah, and I think Kitchen's a guy that, uh, uh, outside of a, a shootout, mm-hmm. we don't know what's going to happen there. But Glendale is an example where uh, Kitchen didn't have it that night. He fought, fought back, did a couple passes back and forth, and just kind of settled in for second and third. Yeah. Which I think he's plenty capable to get back to second or third. Yep. 
Yep, so. especially in this group. Uh, Joe Schmota gets third. And Joe, I actually thought he would do better last. I thought he would win, to be honest with you. Because, really? Well, we're in the point where it doesn't matter anymore oh, if he wins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's no we're pressure. No pressure, yeah. Um, but what a ride to go. I mean, literally, it's just what we talk about. The second half of the race, he's so good. Well, he bounced his ball sack off the seat pretty hard there and went down. Well, yeah. And then got up and still, still came back. back. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this was a great ride to get where he got to. The problem is he just cannot put it together at the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's incredible the difference. And the difference, I mean, dude, he was so fast the second half of that race. Yeah. yeah uh, JT kind of threw that at Ricky in the broadcast and was like, yeah, he just kind of doesn't. And Ricky just dodged around it. Did you hear it? <laughs> no. Uh, JT set him up perfect. Like, Joe, like, we're getting to the end of the season where, you know, he doesn't have any points on the line. He's riding better. And Ricky just, like, kind of jumped right around it. Didn't really, like, it was weird. Like, he didn't want to piss him off or something. But. Uh, I don't know, man. It's, I it's just, weird. I don't know what to even say because yeah, it's so weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to fix it. Definitely a confidence thing. Um, starts were there. I think he'd been struggling with starts, but he did get the practice That he has shot. been struggling with. Um, he did get the heat hole shot. Mm-hmm. Um, and where was he in the main when he went down? Like fifth, sixth? No, he was back farther than that because in was the main he? he got shit. Start I mean, too. either way, it was a really good ride in the main. Yeah, to get a podium. So, but this is just end of the year Shimoda kind of thing. I was gonna say, is could, it the bike? Do we? Is he really? Is know. he adapting to that program no, that much I more? I don't think it's the bike. I just think this is Joe. We've we've seen this too much. You know, he's been in the 2VD class for five years. Has he? I think he's. That is kind of crazy. If I'm if if I'm Mertz. Lucas Myrtle, his agent. I ride out this Honda contract here, and then I try to find him a secondary seat on a 450 team. Because what what else are you going to gain here? No, You're I mean, probably not going to win a title. He'll be a secondary guy. And yeah, and in a couple of years here, there's going to be a lot of 450 seats that are open. So just move it on up, move it on up, call it a day. Because I just don't know that you win a title. Yeah. And then what happens when you do, and then there aren't any seats, then you're up a real shit creek without a paddle. Yeah, you're like fucking Jeremy Martin, basically. Yeah. Which, I hope that narrative kind of changes. Why not Why not be a 250 guy? Guys are making a living in the Xfinity series. Oh, boy, you do know? you want me to get started on this? Because I, I went off on this during the live show yesterday. Do you want me to get started no, on this? I'm good. Because I'm good. I could run down every way we need to change the entire sport from top to bottom here. Yeah, no, I'm good. Okay. All right, <laughs> All right we'll cover that a different day. Uh, March Banks came back to fourth, and that was a really good ride for him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Garrett sucks at starts. Uh, yeah, you probably listened to the same post-race stuff that I was listening to. He <laughs> slid over the, uh, the plastic. Mm. So... Um, and he said he doesn't do that at club at home or something. So, uh, Mr. Marchbanks, uh, whoever your mechanic is, or, or maybe you can remember this, have your, uh, mechanic bring some contact cleaner or some kind of, uh, spray down to the starting line, spray the plastic over and wipe her down. I don't, think, I don't think they can do that. I think they can wipe it with their hand, but I don't think you can spray it. Well, there are plenty of guys... Oh, you're going to tell me that a guy's going to wipe it with a microfiber and somebody's going to be like, oh, you got liquid on that microfiber. I guess, but then it evaporates, though. Right, it evaporates all the slick shit off there. Mm. You know, you wipe it down and get a little, just a little bit of what you need, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hmm. Like when you put contact cleaner on your graphics, you know how it dulls it down? Yeah, I guess. Okay, okay, all right. Um, yeah. so, there all you right. go. That's my, my trick. <laughs> there you go. That is, there's your trick for that. I'm actually surprised, now that we talk about this, that nobody has put, like, any of the like tacky stuff on a rag like the drag racers have or whatever and like try to as long as it's clear though and try to wipe it on the thing well yeah or you know i mean i bet guys are doing something there has to be there has to be yeah guys are doing something like that there's no way they're not hmm. well, they were white they were wiping the gates down with uh microfiber towels when sexton got that badass start when it was muddy mm. because i remember sitting there and they were all wiping them down i was like they better wipe sexton's gate off and it didn't look like they did and then he got that start, and I was like, well, I guess they fucking wiped his gate off. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there, there's something. You could do something. We'll hear about it in, like, 20 years. What do they do in drag racing? They call it pimp juice. Something put, like put that. Put some pimp juice on there. Yeah. Uh, Carson Mumford, fifth. Quiet. Couldn't tell you anything about it. No. I wonder what that fifth place bonus is, though, for Moto Concepts. <sighs> who knows? I top mean, five. they only show up to, like, a couple of the races a year, so who knows what the fuck the deal yeah, is. Yeah, top five, dude. So, uh, okay, here we go. Michael Moseman, sixth. 
I mean, this is my this is my pro flow racing mini moment of the race here. Let's hear it. He crashes twice in qualifying. This is very Michael Moseman. I didn't watch qualifying. It was it was exactly the same Michael Moseman <laughs> that we've seen for however many years. Yeah, fast as fuck, boy, and then hits a dick. So it's such a weird thing because we went from <laughs> no ride. So we were going to do triumph of the ride to then all of a sudden we're possibly riding star to then we're still hurt to rumors wait of a Honda at one point to wait. We're back on star the Honda rumors and then, Oh, we're going to ride star, but only Supercross and only West coast, but we're not starting till Seattle. And now it's, Oh, we got a two year deal. What? <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? A two year deal. He's got a two year deal. Wow. And and that guy, like, I don't see him fitting into that dog eat dog program. Not but. a chance. Not a chance. I don't like. I can see him. Like, no disrespect to Michael Moseman. He's a but nice he's a, enough. Kid, he's a nice, different kid. Like, he's like a church boy. Yep. And it's he's almost way nicer and churchier than Trey Kennard. But yep. I feel like Michael Moseman. Mike Michael Moseman. Michael Moseman. Um, I feel like he's just down at the star compound and just has a chair out in the corner and just like sits there like the kid at school that nobody talks to. I'm just he's just sitting over in the corner by himself. Star racing, eating an apple. Seven riders. So when's it getting bought out? When are they slimming? I don't. know. When's man. new management tightening the budget up? I don't know. I'm just I'm so confused by this. Sixth place is okay, I think, coming back because it's oh, been yeah. over a year. So like that's an okay and the, ride. The to mystery me. injuries that we never even really knew about. But I'm just like, I just don't see how all the puzzle pieces fit together with this. And I don't necessarily see this tiger changing his stripes either. He, uh, it's got to be like he's paying for his ride kind of thing. Got to be. Probably not getting paid. Let's just go with that. Yeah, probably not getting paid. They said, well, here's a guy that could get on the box or he'll ragdoll himself. So if we don't pay him. Okay. Yeah, but where I just think of like the parts budgets. Like yeah. the sprockets, the chains, the handlebars, the grips, like the wheels. <laughs> like, I've heard I've heard of sponsors that like when Star contacts them, they're like, "Yeah, we cannot sponsor you because we could never provide you this much product because <laughs> it's just that unreal." Yeah, their parts allowance. So, um, I, you, I don't know. Interesting deal. Yeah, I mean, cool we'll, deal. We'll I think see. It's cool. It could be a very cool story. He, he's one of those. If he ends up on the podium, okay. If he ends up in last. Okay. If he wins, I wouldn't even be shocked. The no. dude just came out to Hangtown and just fucking won a moto out of nowhere. Yeah. So, uh, Juju gets seventh. Okay. That's not bad. Dude, he was fighting, though. Yeah. I liked it. And he gets good starts. Yeah, fighter. He gets really good starts. Fighter. So, I think but the... I, I'd be interested to see him when we get on a, like, maybe next week will be okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause it won't be complete shit. Mm -hmm. But I, I'd like to see him on some more of these, we'll call them harder pack tracks cause yeah, of where yeah. he's from. I think he'd be, do better. So, yeah. uh, Anthony Bordone comes back, gets oh, eighth place. God, just keeps doing what he does. I wonder how, how do you think he would be on a, on a better bike? If somebody I signed Bordeaux. I don't think, yeah. I don't think, think he's so. just, no, I think this who is, he is. Yeah. I don't think ain't, you'd yeah. see anything. Dude's been solid different. as fuck. Yeah. Dude's been solid. Uh, Justin's hero, Nate Thrasher, comes back and gets ninth. Okay. I didn't even know he was back. He was just kind of there. Yep. What a, oh, I know I'm feeding right into your shit. Oh, you want to get this started, huh? Go ahead. Fire it off. Because this <sighs> ought to be It's just so, I don't even know what the right word for it. Hold on. Do you want me to read an anom results? An not anomaly? Is Hold that on. a word? Let's go back. So we have last night. I get night, it. I get nine, it. I get it. It's, three, it's one, first, nine, 18, DNF, 21st, first. 19, 2, 2, 10, 1, 2, 15, 9, 5, 6, 9. Oh, these are outdoors. Hold on. Let's get back into Supercross here. Okay. Supercross 2022. Salt Lake City first, Denver ninth, Atlanta fifth, Seattle eleventh, Anaheim three twentieth, Glendale seventh, Anaheim two fourth, San Diego eighth, Oakland fifth, Anaheim one twelve. So he literally went in twenty twenty two. He went twelve five eight <laughs> four seven twenty eleven five nine one. <laughs> okay. Twenty twenty three was like one one nineteen two. Twenty twenty three fifteen two one ten. Two two nineteen, and that was where he got hurt. Weird, <laughs> just, just like the weirdest results ever. Weird, great rider, 
Yeah, like, phenomenal rider. Race Not, winner. Like, I can see why like TLD and Star had that like, breach of contract kind of deal and there's 100%. all that drama. Like he's talented. Will never win a title. I didn't, they got to figure something out. He's the next Jordan Smith, RJ Hamshire, Cameron you, McAdoo. You think he's got kitchen syndrome? Nope. It's very kitchenish. Nope. I think he's I think well, he's an RJ and uh and a Smith. Well, well here's where I'm going with it. Kitchen was the same way. Was mm-hmm. he not? Like he'd come out and win a moto and get 19th the next time? I don't know that. I'm talking like outdoors, he'd win the first moto or he'd get like 10th the first moto and then win. I don't know that Kitchens has been that bad. Let's scroll back here. Let's go Yeah, back. I guess like where I'm going with this though is like the Star program Kitchen didn't like that. And now look, he goes to pro circuit and look what's going on. Mm-hmm. I think he needs a change of scenery. So if we go back to last year, let's say with Kitchen, 7, 21, first at Anaheim 2, but that was a triple crown mm-hmm. and he never won a moto. He went like whatever. Last year was also his first full year in Supercross, by Four, the way. 4, 6, 3, 12, 2, 3. Yeah, see what I mean? Uh, I don't know. It's Did not put put Nate Thrasher on a pro circuit Kawasaki. <sighs> Maybe. Well, like we'll see. Hopefully, at some point, we'll get to see that play out and see if it mm-hmm. works. But right now, it's just it's so like feast or famine with him. Of like, either wins or he's like fifteenth. Yeah, I think he needs to change the scenery. Get that him off be. that team. Get him off that bike. Uh, Cole Thompson, tenth. Got it's anything on there? He is. Would have yep. been a great fantasy pick if we could play Pulp. Rider D eleventh <laughs> went and... down. I saw him down called the ghostbusters yep uh phil nicoletti 12th uh robbie wageman 13th Mm -hmm. (sighs) here we go i don't think about any of these guys now that i don't have pulp anymore dude jordan smith 14th oh i know all right go ahead let it rip hold on this is the shoe dropping okay this is the same shit with rj same shit with mcadoo i'm just waiting for it this is what happens this is what happens this is who these guys... This is who they are. This is who he is. This is who he is. <laughs> it's just like... And it's not just, oh, I had a big one there and tried to take out a generator and a camera. I it's, thought he hit the generator. It's, oh, I did that, and then I crashed twice more getting up because I was fucking concussed. Do you think... He didn't look like he hit his head, though. He hit his head when he when he cased it. If you watch that On slowly... The bar? Yeah. He he does. This. So like, it's, either, it's either concussed from hitting it or he's concussed from whiplash. One of the two. Like the... Okay. The only other thing, and I maybe we'll hear an interview come out from him this week or something, would be if when he did that, he knocked the wind out of himself, and that's why he was so, like, laying there or whatever. But outside of that, full-blown concussed. Because you watch those other two, and it's just like, a, it's a clown show. You weren't even thinking. Yeah. I was going to say, it's like when you can't get your bearings or whatever, which is full-blown concussion syndrome. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there will be plenty of shows. I'm sure Cooksey will be out there this week blowing it up about, like, this is ridiculous that they let yeah, him get back got on. got to the point where a respected guy like Chris Kiefer was, like, black flagging, get him off there. Yeah, because so. it was dangerous, dude. Like, yeah, he when he pulled out in front of that guy in, like, no-look Stewart style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like when Stewart took Windrum out that one time. Yep. Yep. But again, oh, but this is, and again, this is no disrespect to these guys. This is just the way their luck and career goes. Yeah. Our, and RJ's the same way, and McAdoo's the same way, and everybody's talking how McAdoo's changing his stripes or whatever. And I'm like, we got rounds to go. It ain't <laughs> over till it's over here. With these guys, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Um, so there it was. I mean, it was uh, almost a run. <laughs> yeah. So he's out of it now. Uh, so yeah, so that's the thing. Uh, Talon Hawkins, 15th, Hunter Yoder, 16th. Oh, uh, Hawkins' bike was ugly. Those blue bikes, bro. How confusing is it? The AEO and the AJE are all oh, on the they same were coast, yeah. yeah and they're well, battling the AEO, stuff. the Smurf blue bikes weren't it, yeah. No, nah, I wasn't a huge fan of that. Uh, Lux Turner, 17th, TJ mm-hmm. Albright, 18th, Maddie Jorgensen, 19th, mm-hmm. Josh Varese, 20th, mm-hmm. Maxwell Sanford. 21st and dylan walsh 22nd oh dylan walsh ended up going down or something must be yeah i think he went down pretty early there yeah, the first his first race yeah. back from injury too so yep uh, lux uh, turner as well they red flagged the race, one of the first ones for mm-hmm. him he was hurt yep. in, in back so good for him yep so and that's been your 250 race recap brought to you by our friends at 50 graphics okay well Wow, it's been through. It's amazing when there's only two of us how fast we go through. Me and Justin did the same thing last week, like hour and a half show, we were done. Yeah, but you get wow, you guys didn't argue. 
I told you he was tired. He wanted to go home. So no, he didn't. He didn't buy well, into my stuff. Usually, as much. it's like a, a jet argument, and I don't know if you do it just to press buttons, but you guys, I just, always do stuff to press buttons. I know. We you need guys, content for the show. I don't guys, understand guys, why this is a you problem. You guys go in a circle and never understand each other, and it just goes on. He's very passionate. The only thing we got passionate about last week, though, was how good RV's technique was. <laughs> I didn't hear. I would have stepped up and just said, "Come on, guy." Hey, man, go back and listen to it. That's dude. a hot take. It's a very hot take. I tried telling him that he didn't listen. Like his technique, his individual technique, like for himself. Yes, I get it. Mm-hmm. But his technique for everyone else? Mm-hmm. Hell no. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes you just gotta let the kids learn themselves. I'm gonna have to go back to and watch some WD 840 highlights of Villapoto. I know. I know. So get uh, get his uh, views up and <laughs> his paycheck. Anything else you want to talk about? Oh, I don't know. Is there anything else I want to talk about? Let me scroll through the Twitter feed here, see if there's anything on there. Who wins next weekend at this Triple Crown? Jet and who else? Kitchen. Okay, great. Good. Kitchen seems to be a Triple Crown guy. Is that where you're at with it? Yeah, uh, yeah I'll be okay with that. Um, let's go in the Twitter world. There's usually always some hilarious stuff on Twitter. Okay. So if let's you don't see. have X or Twitter, get on there. I do. I just have well, never logged and in. And the listeners as well. Oh, the chiz thing. Everybody was like, yeah, he chizzed on the line. <laughs> and other, other people were saying the Holy Spirit went through him. Well, that could be too. <laughs> Lord Jesus, help me. Chiz didn't chiz blasphemy. Um, I thought he was having a seizure. He's been doing this for 47 years. Trust his process. <laughs> uh, DJ Chiz with a little bit of the remix. Uh, um, I don't know, dude. Just little stuff like that that I find so humorous. Yep. There's that. There's uh, there's the. Do you follow the Moto memes like Bingo Card? No. Moto memes has some good ones though. There have been some good ones popping up recently. The, uh, the bingo card had like when Ricky calls uh if Ricky calls Hunter Jet and he did last night. Yep. Um God, there's a bunch of other good ones on there. I don't know. I'm losing yeah, they're good. They're good. Anyway, so. follow Moto Memes, follow us. Yeah. Follow uh Follow me. Follow TLR Codings. Follow Fifty Graphics. Just just follow everybody. Follow everybody follow that everybody. supports us because uh, yeah, we wouldn't be doing this every week. It wouldn't motivate us. And the people commenting, man, like I, yeah, that brings a lot of joy to me when people comment and I can inter- interact. Like people talking yep. shit, I think's hilarious. I do too. Um, especially no, when it's, just, it's at me. Just kind of like building a little community. It's cool. Yeah, like it's fun. People people give a shit about us as people. Yeah. rather than just the racing talk. Yeah. Which is cool. I think that's really cool. Um, okay, so one other, I guess one other thing here then to wrap this up that I was going to kind of bring up, and the hardcore people will still be listening, so I'll bring this up now. Mm. Been thinking about doing a Thursday night members-only bench racing show on YouTube. Mm-hmm. There is a membership subscription service that they do on YouTube. I've been thinking about it where we would uh, go live for about an hour on Thursday evenings at some point and uh, just kind of talk any topic you wanted to about moto or the world or anything. It would just be a private people group put in the comments. It yeah. would be very cheap. Probably like $2 a month would be the most I would put up there for it. Um, but that is something I've been tossing around. So for all you hardcore fans are still listening now here this many hours into it, mm-hmm. hour and a half. Ah, uh, pretty quick. Pretty quick. Uh, comment down below if you guys would be interested in something like that. Cause I know a lot of you guys want to talk to us. You want to bench race with us. You want to do all that kind of stuff. And I don't know if these guys would be here, uh, but at least I would jump on and yeah, answer could, questions, well, we give takes. Do it to where we could like remotely like the title yeah. two, four show kind yep. of deal. Yeah. We might be able to do some of that too. So, yeah. um, yeah. So like I said, comment down below. Cause I've been kind of tossing that idea around again. This would not be a free one. Um, because, Let's face it, I already do three shows a week. Or just or just anything else to make us better. Like, yeah. What do you guys think would would improve your experience listening to us, watching us? Yep. Um, We're working on a new camera system. We're working on having a guy in the corner to produce the show. Yeah, it we're, would be... There's think, lots of different things like that that we're tossing around and trying to figure out logistically and monetarily how to make it happen here. Yeah. 
Um, it would be really helpful to have somebody. I don't know how to do it, or if there's a software that does it. But like while we are talking, be able to like press a button for a timestamp to know that we could mm-hmm. go back and cut that session. Yes, 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 yes. Because like I enjoy editing the stuff and like mm-hmm. making stuff like that, but I hate listening to it all well, i hate having to go through an hour and a half four hour show to find a 10 mm-hmm. second clip yep. you know what i mean yep so i i don't know what gypsy's process is or whatever those guys process is but they've got it dialed and we need to figure out what that is so if anybody knows <laughs> yeah um because um, that would make things a lot easier because we could cut the uh you know i i have a vision of like the opening ceremonies thing and we could mm-hmm. cut into some cool stuff and yep i don't know man there's lots of options we can do. Just, Again, uh, we some, can't all do it ourselves. Some we, stuff I've been tossing around. So uh, comment down below your thoughts on that. Comment your winners for the next Triple Crown here at St. Louis. We'll be back next week. Again, I don't think I'm going to do the live qualifying show just because of the Easter holiday there. Mm-hmm. Um, I will do the race reaction. We will have a main show. How exactly that works, I'm not sure yet. Are we, in, are we off week after St. Louis? I think Easter is an off week. No. Easter. We got St. Louis next week, and next week is Easter. Oh, is it? Yeah. April 1st is Easter? Yes. Oh. So, but then I think we have an off week. So okay, we may be ahead. able to do the show on Monday or something then instead yeah, of no, Sunday. So we'll figure that out. But anyway, like I said, we will have the main show. We will have the race reaction, uh, but probably no live qualifying show. So anyway, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks to all our sponsors. Yep. Links in the description down below. We'll see you all next week. Later.